everyone. So how has 2024 been so far? Well, we've had our first serious winter storm. We've lost power. We've lost our snow. We got it back. It's been pretty eventful. You know, last year I shared uh, pictures and videos of evening gross beaks visiting my feeders. And I remember many of you wrote back to me saying, oh, I used to have evening gross beaks at my feeders all the time, but I haven't seen them in years. I didn't really have any definitive answers to your emails, but now I know. Project Feeder Watch has just sent an email saying that the population of evening gross beaks has declined by 92% since 1970s. So that's why you're not seeing them at your bird feeders on a regular basis. And now scientists are trying to understand why their population has declined so drastically and how to reverse it. So a conservation project has been launched and we are asked to report any banded evening gross beaks we see. Please uh, submit your sightings either on reportband.gov and send an email to David Yini, who is in charge of the project. And thank you all for sending me pictures and videos of your red-bellied woodpeckers. You're so lucky. I've decided if I don't see any in real life by sort of November 2024, please make sure to include your address in your emails and I'll come knocking on your door. I'll bring you a bird feeder as well. Looking at your pictures and then going through some of the footage that Steve Maslowski shot for us of us Grobuster Plus and then listening to David's report on the pecking order amongst birds reminded me of another study that was done by Cornell to figure out which bird wins when a bunch of them show up at bird feeders. Believe it or not, it's not blue jays, it's the red-bellied woodpecker. So if you notice that your red-bellied woodpeckers are displacing other birds, they are like other woodpeckers, absolutely love suet and nuts. So please give them their own designated feeder. You can first locate it with all the other feeders and then you can move it around and maybe that will teach them how to behave amongst other birds. Anna Michalchev from Montreal filmed a woodpecker on her suet feeder and looked like he was just taking a nap on the feeder. So she's wondering if this is what was happening or it was up to something else. Hi Anna. Well, that is indeed interesting behavior. Near as I can tell, I believe that it's a downy woodpecker. It's certainly unusual for a bird to just cling to a feeder for such a lengthy period. In my 30 or more years of feeding, I've never seen a woodpecker of any kind stay in my feeders for more than just a few minutes before moving on. The bird doesn't appear to be exhibiting any obvious distress symptoms, for example, closing and opening its eyes or panting. And we cannot tell if it has sustained some sort of hidden physical injury from an attack by a hawk or a cat. Other possibilities might be that it's suffering from a disease or perhaps chemical poisoning. It might just be a really old bird that's on its last legs and simply hanging out in a familiar and readily available food source. While I'm more inclined though to believe that the bird is sitting still and a wee bit stunned after striking a window or narrowly escaping a predator, we could think more positively and go with what you suggest. It's just having a bit of a nap. After all, pecking at things thousands of times in a single day must surely wear out a woodpecker. Hopefully by the time you see this video, the bird flew off in a very healthy state. I have to admit to being a bit puzzled as to why songbirds spend so much time belting out their songs on a daily basis, especially knowing that there's a risk to letting every predator in the area know of their existence. Even though most bird songs last a few seconds or so, a typical songbird puts out about 1,000 to 2,500 singing bouts a day. One European species called the yellowhammer sings over 3,000 times a day. So why do it, one might ask? Well, a recent study may shed some light on the question. Now, it's well established that songbirds mainly sing to attract mates, particularly the males, but that they also use song to ward off intruding competitors. But is there a need to do it incessantly? It turns out that birds need to regularly exercise the muscles they use to produce song. Iris Adam, a behavioral neuroscientist at the University of Denmark, designed some experiments with tiny male zebra finches in captivity. First, she severed the connection between the singing muscles in the brain. After two days, they lost some of their singing strength. But after three weeks, they regained their ability. 
Adam then took some other intact finches and prevented them from singing by keeping them in the dark around the clock. After a week, their singing muscles lost half their strength. Next, she gave females a choice of listening to those males versus ones with a full singing ability. Naturally, the girls preferred the males with the full Sinatra capability. The bottom line is that male songbirds need to regularly exercise those vocal cords and practice their singing on a daily basis to keep them in top shape or lose the ladies to the crooner next door. Adam says we humans can learn from birds. If one refrains from speaking or singing for that matter for too long, it's possible to lose some vocal performance. And that perhaps that's why we men love to sing in the shower so much. Every year on the 1st of January, I wake up and I wonder what is going to be my first bird of the year. Normally, it's actually chickadees, but this year I was shocked to see a European starling on my bird feeders. We just don't see them on our feeders this time of the year. They normally show up in the summer, kind of checking our backyard, doing some cleanup in the garden. When they venture to my suet feeder, hairy woodpeckers don't like to share their suet, so they take care of starlings. But then I did a little bit of research and this might be actually a sign of an early spring migration. So far it's been one starling showing up here and there. Do you actually know the story of how this species was introduced to North America from Europe, of course? Well, in the early 1890s, Shakespeare lovers decided to introduce birds from Shakespeare's works to Central Park. They released about 100 European starlings and now we're up to over 200 million of them in North America. And even though their population is quite abundant here, in some areas in Europe, their population has declined. They've actually been red listed in some areas. So perhaps at some point we'll have to pack them up and ship them back and call them North American starlings. I know many people consider them pests, but I like to look on the bright side. So let's talk about the positive sides of these birds. First of all, their preferred diet is insects and bugs. Their bills are built for finding bugs in the ground, even when it gets really cold. So they're pretty good as a pest control in one's gardens. And then their colors. They are just such beautiful birds. I've seen incredible photography of these birds. And do you know that European starlings can actually see ultraviolet? So can you imagine how iridescent they look to each other? I also find that their songs are quite beautiful. I often hear them when walking around town. The first time I heard a male singing, I was surprised that it was a European starling. They're also great at mimicking just about anything. And finally, their famous murmurations. Uh, what a show, what a mesmerizing event that I think everyone should watch at least once in their lifetime. And now let's talk about things you can do to control them around your bird feeders. But remember, when they find a foraging area that they really like, they tend to go back over and over. So it can be a little bit of a battle, but here are a few things you can do. They don't really like safflower seeds, so you can fill your feeders with that. A niger seed, if it's served in the feeder like our squirrel buster finch, where the openings are so tiny, they just can't extract that kind of seed. And then plain suet you know the one that looks white there is nothing added to it they don't care for that either if you're crafty you can also put all sorts of like metal roofs above seed pores so either out of metal or tin foil and remove the perches that will also restrict access to bird seed I guess life would be just too boring without any drama in it. But before we check out the top five of our bird drama photo contest, I'd like to mention to you that our photo contest will be changing a bit throughout the year. From now on, all three winners will have to sit out for the following three contests. And now the top five.
Here's the third place. The second place. And the first place. Congratulations, everybody. February is bird selfies. Good luck, everyone. Well, that's it, that's all for now. Good luck with starlings and red-bellied woodpeckers. And I hope that evening grosbeaks will visit you this year. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.